One of the most commonly asked questions that I get in my inbox, on social media, or people that I talk to is what dosage of a particular product should I be giving my pet? What dosage of a particular product should I be giving my pet? Well, there's two answers to that. One, if it's a product that is in our warehouse on our website, the dosages will be under the product listing. So please go to the product listing on the website and that should have dosing either based on weight or size of the pet. Second, every pet is different. So there may be a range in the dosing based on uh, the size or severity of whatever it is that you're treating. So there may be a range. The recommendation is always to start low, test out any new product that you're adding to your pet's regimen, add a small amount, less than the recommended dose, see how they respond to it, give it over a few days. If they have no adverse reactions, then you can work your way up to the full dose that is on the label or on the website. A question that I get asked commonly is, can I use this particular supplement with the medications that my pet is on? Again, there is no one size fits all answer to that because there can be interactions between herbal products and supplements and some medications. Generally, if I get asked that question, some of them I know off the top of my head, but many of them I don't. And I actually have to go look it up in an internet search, which is the same thing that you can do. There's a human site called drugs.com where you can look up interactions of medications. So it's actually a good idea anytime your veterinarian prescribes anything for your animal to look up what medications it may interact with. Maybe your veterinarian doesn't have the full list of medications that your pet is on in front of them, or if you have to go to a different veterinarian from your, your normal practitioner, you may be getting something prescribed that is going to interact with other things that your pet is on. So it's always a good idea to put that in a search engine and put, are there any interactions between A and B? And once you have that information, that gives you the answer. Uh, so that's just a quick tip. That's what I use if I need to find interactions between things. Another question that we commonly get asked is, which is the best product for my pet's X? Whether that's allergies, arthritis, IBD, acid reflux. Unfortunately, we, or I are not capable of saying exactly which one is going to be the best one for your pet. Again, every pet is an individual and the symptoms that you're seeing can be caused by widely different things. Um, so again, read the descriptions of the products and try to choose based on the description that best fits your pet. So for instance, for arthritis, we probably have 50 different supplements. So what I do with my own animals is I will pick the one that seems to fit the description the best for what problem they have. I'll try it. If I'm seeing some response after a week or so, then I keep going with it. Now, some of these products, when we're using supplements, particularly for things like arthritis, you're not going to see overnight results, and it may take up to three weeks, uh, particularly for allergies, arthritis, a lot of those itis things that are very chronic. So start with one product. See if you're getting any response to that. If you're getting some response but not enough response, then maybe you want to layer on something else. We have some pets with inflammatory problems that may be on five or six different supplements. My little guy with cancer right now is on 17 different supplements. And that's what it takes to keep his cancer under control. And I added them on by choice, layering them on until I got the desired response that I wanted.
Pet parents often have trouble figuring out how much food to give their pets. We do have rules of thumb, and most pet food companies, either on their website or on their packaging, have recommended daily feeding guidelines. However, every pet is an individual. My 30-pound dog gets four ounces of food twice a day. One of my 10-pound dogs gets eight ounces of food twice a day. I came to those doses for them based on their activity level, whether they're overweight, whether they're underweight, their age. So many different variables go in. So you want to start with the recommended guidelines, which again are usually on the website or the packaging of the food. Feed that for a week. If you can weigh your pet, that's amazing because you can have a starting weight and then a week later you can weigh them, a week after that you can weigh them. If you cannot weigh them, then use the body conditioning scores, the BCS. You can look those up online. They're also in our books. But look at your pet and judge. Are they gaining weight? Are they losing weight? You might want to take a picture of your pet from the side and from above weekly and compare it and say, ooh, we're starting to lose that waistline or ooh, I'm seeing a little more rib pattern sticking out. Um, and then you can adjust your food up and down based on that. So it's really easy to make adjustments. Pick a starting point based on the recommendations on the packaging or the website of the food company, and then go up and down based on how your pet is responding to that food. A lot of pet parents love giving snacks and treats to their pets. We don't do as many at our house, but it seems like lately a lot more snacks have been being doled out. And we have to be very careful that we are not handing out so many treats that we are making our pets overweight. So when you're looking at treats, look at the calorie count if it's on the packaging, um, look at the size of the treat and monitor your pet's weight. If they are gaining weight, you either have to cut back a little bit on the food or cut back on the snacks. If they're a thin dog, like my little forest who is uber active, he races around all the time, he's very thin, I could give him tons of treats without any trouble. Um, usually we say that the treats should not make up more than about 5 to 10 percent of the daily calories for your pet. Again, you may not know the calories, but it's pretty easy to estimate like, okay, he's a little 10-pound dog. I can give two or three of these treats a day. And again, it's going to depend on the size of the treat and if the calories are on there, the calorie content. I find that when I'm using things like freeze-dried meats or fruits and veggies, the calories are not that, uh, cal the treats are not that calorie dense. So usually I can get away with handing out a few of those without much trouble. If you are using uh, high carbohydrate treats or very calorie dense treats, then that is going to mean that you're going to give less. But again, 10% of their calories for the day would be absolutely fine. No matter what you are feeding your pet, you can always add superfoods to the bowl or the platter, basically to kind of soup up what we're giving them as far as nutrient value. So it just depends what the treats are. We do have a list of superfoods that's a free download on the website. So things like blueberries and eggs and sardines, you could use up to 25% of your pet's meal as superfood add-ins, and there are great studies, uh, particularly out of Purdue University about a decade or so ago, where they showed that adding 25 to 30% fresh whole superfoods to the bowl greatly increased the longevity and health of the dogs that were given those. So feel free to add superfoods to the bowl and you should see great differences in your pets. So don't forget, every pet is an individual. Every pet is going to have their own individual needs as far as supplements, diet, amounts that are fed, amount of exercise needed. Everything is an individual. If you have children, you know that no two children are exactly the same. Even if they're identical twins, they still have their own needs, their own wants, and their own desires. That goes for our pets as well. 
So treat each one as an individual. Don't try to lump them all together and feed everybody the same thing or use all the same supplements for everyone. You need to look at what each individual needs and you will get much better success with your pets.